Hello, I, I'm Annalisa from East Sussex, England, and um, this is my mother's voice. Today I'm going to continue reading the, the book I started last time, which was a 1725 book um, called Rules That Concern All Servants in General. And uh, 300 years old, it has no back, no front, and it's got burns to it here. And it's got lots of stains and creases inside, so it's a, it's a little bit difficult to read, but it's uh, worth reading. Um, occasionally, I'll stumble over some of the um, words because either I'm not familiar with them, or, or not familiar with their spelling, or, and they may, or they may be on a crease or something. So um, today, I'm going to read chapter one, uh, which is directions to the butler. Now I've already tried this once today and it totally failed because I did it on YouTube video and just as I finished the YouTube video packed in and deleted it and that was like half an hour down the drain. So th this time I'm trying it on the camcorder on the uh, laptop so if the quality is not that good please forgive. Thanks. So I'll go straight into it today and this is uh, directions to the butler. And by the way, I, I really enjoyed, I've re read it a couple of times now and this chapter is basically telling the butler to scam the master and mistress of the house and uh, you'll see why it's quite amusing. In my directions to servants, I find my, from my log long observation that you butlers are the principal persons concerned. Your business being of the greatest variety and requiring the greatest exactness, I shall, as well as I can recollect, run through the several branches of your office and order my instructions accordingly. In waiting at the sideboard, take all possible care to give you, save your own trouble and your master's drinking glasses. Therefore, first, since those who dine at the same table are supposed to be friends, let them all drink out of the same glass without washing, which will save you much pains as well as the hazard of breaking them. Give no persons any liquor until he hath called for it at least three times, by which means some out of modesty and others out of forgetfulness will call the, the seldomer and thus your master's liquor be saved. If any one desires a glass of bottled ale, first shake the bottle to see whether there's anything be in it. Then take it, taste it to see what liquor it is, that you may not be mistaken. And lastly, wipe the mouth of the bottle with your palm of your hand to show your cleanliness. Be careful to have the cork in the belly of the bottle than in the mouth. And if the cork be musty, or white friars in your liquor, your master will save the more. If an hum humble companion, a chaplain, a tutor, or a dependent cousin happen to be at the table, whom you find to be little regarded by the master, and the company which nobody is ready to discover and observe than the servants, it must be the business of you and the footman to follow the example of your betters by treating him many degrees worse than any of the rest. And you cannot please your master better, or least, least your lady. If any one calls for small beer towards the end of the dinner, do not give yourself the pains of going down to the cellar, but gather the droppings and leavings out of several cups and glasses, and salvers into one, but turn your back to the company for fear of being observed. On the contrary, when any one calls for ale towards the end of dinner, Fill the largest tankard cup, top full, by which you will have the greatest part left to oblige your fellow servants, without the f sin of stealing from your master. There is likewise a p perquisite, full, of, full as honest, by which you have a chance of getting every day the best part of a bottle of wine for yourself. For you are to suppose that gentlefolk will not care for the remainder of a bottle, Therefore always set a fresh one before them after dinner, although there hath not been above a glass drank of the other. 
Take special care that your bottles be not musty before you fill them, in order to which blow strongly into the mouth of every bottle and then, if you smell nothing but your own breath, immediately fill it. If you are sent down in haste to draw any drink and find it will not run, do not be at the trouble of opening a vent, but blow strongly into the faucet and you will find it immediately pour into your mouth. Or take out the vent, but do not stay to put it in again for fear your master should want you. If you are curious to taste some of your master's choice bottles, empty as many of them just below the neck as will make the quantity you want, but then take care to fill them up again with clean water that you may not lessen your master's liquor. There is an excellent invention found out of late years in the management of ale and small beers at the sideboard. For instance, a gentleman calls for a glass of ale and drinks but half. Another calls for a small beer. You immediately turn out the remainder of the ale into the tankard and fill the glass with small beer, and so backwards and forwards as long as the dinner lasts, by which you answer three great ends. First, you save yourself the trouble of washing and consequently the danger of breaking your glasses. Second, you are sure not to be mistaken in giving gentlemen the liquor that they call for. And lastly, by this method, you are certain that nothing is left. Because butlers are apt to forget to bring up their ale and beer time enough, be sure you remember to have yours two hours before dinner and place them in the sunny part of the room to let people see that you have not been negligent. Some butlers have a way of decanting, as they call it, bottled ale, by which they lose a great part of the bottom. Let your method be to turn the bottle directly upside down, which will make the liquor appear double the quantity. By this means you will be sure not to lose one drop, and the froth will conceal the muddiness. Clean your plate, wipe your knife, and rub the dirty tables with the napkins and tablecloths used that day, for it, it is but one washing, and besides it will save you wearing out the coarse rubbers, and in reward of such good husbandry my judgment is that you may lawfully make use of the finest damask napkins for nightcaps for yourself. When you clean your plate, leave the whiting plainly to be seen in the chinks, for fear your lady should not believe that you had cleaned it. There is nothing wherein the skill of a butler more appears than in the management of candles, whereof, although some part may fall to the share of other servants, yet you being the principal person concerned, I shall direct my instructions upon this article to you only, leaving to your, to your fellow servants to apply them upon occasion. First, to avoid burning daylight, and to fa save your master's candles, never bring them up till half an hour after it be dark, although they are called for never so often. Let your sockets be full of grease to the brim, with the old snuff at the top, and then stick on the fresh candles. It is true this may endanger their falling, but the candles will appear so much the longer and handsomer before company. At other times, for a variety, put your candles loose in the sockets, to show that they are clean to the bottom. When your candle is too big for the socket, melt it to the right size in the fire, and hide the smoke, wrap it in paper half way up. You cannot but observe of late years the great, the great extravagance among the gentry upon the article of candles, which a good butler ought by all means to discourage, both to save his own pains and his master's money. This may be contrived several ways, especially when you are ordered to put candles into the sconces. Sconces are great wasters of candles, and you, who are always to consider the advantage of your masters, should do your utmost to encourage them. Therefore, your business must be to press the candles with both your hands into the socket, so as to make it lean in such a manner that the, great, the grease may drop all upon the floor. If some lady's headdress or gentleman's periwig be not ready to intercept it, you may 
likewise stick the candle so loose that it will fall upon the glass of the sconce and break it into shatters. This will save your master many a fair penny in the year, both in candles and to the glass man, and yourself much labour, for the sconces spoiled cannot be used. Never let the candles burn too low, but give them as a lawful perquisite to your friend the cook to increase her hat kitchen stuff. Or, if this be not allowed in your house, give them in charity to the poor neighbours, who often run on your errands. When you cut bread for a toast, do not stand idly watching it, but lay it on the coals, and mind your own business, and then come back, and if you find it toasted quite enough, scrape off the burnt side and serve it up. <coughs> when you dress up your sideboard, set the best glasses as near the edge of the table as you can, by which means they will cast a double lustre and make much finer figure, and the consequences can be at most. But the breaking half a dozen, which is a trifle in your master's pocket. Wash the glasses with your own water to save your master's salt. I'm not sure what that means, but I don't want to think. When any salt is spilt on the table, do not let it be lost. But when dinner is done, fold up the tablecloth with the salt in it, then shake the salt out into the salt cellar to serve next day. But the shortest and surest way when you remove the cloth to to wrap the knives, forks, spoons, salt cellars, broken bread, and scraps of meat all together in the tablecloth, by which you will be sure to lose no nothing, unless you think it better to shake them out of the window among the be beggars, that they may be with more convenience eat the scrap. Leave the dregs of wine, ale, and other liquors in the bottles. To rinse them is but a loss of time, and since all will be done in at once in the general washing, and you will have a better excuse for breaking them. If your master have many musty or very foul and crusted bottles, I advise you in the point of conscience that those must be the first you truck at the next alehouse for ale or brandy. When a message is sent to your master, be kind to your brother servant who brings it. Give him the best liquor in your keeping for your master's honour, and at the first opportunity he will do the same for you. After supper, if it be dark, carry your plate and china together in the same basket to save candlelight, for you know the pa your pantry well enough to put them up in the dark. When company is expected at dinner or in the evenings, be sure to be abroad, that nothing may be got which is under your key, by which the matter will save his look liquor and not wear out his plate. I come now I come now to a most important part of the economy, the bottling of a hogshead of wine, which wherein I can recommend three virtues cleanliness, frugality, and brotherly love. Let your corks be of the longest kind you can get, which will save some wine in the neck of every bottle. As to your bottles, choose the smallest you can find, which will increase the number of dozens and please your master, for a bottle of wine is always a bottle of wine, whether it hold more or less. And if your master hath his proper number of dozens, he cannot complain. Every bottle must be first rinsed wine, for fear of any moisture left in the, the washing. Some of the mistaken thrift will rinse a, a dozen bottles with the same wine, but I would advise you for more caution to change the wine at every second bottle. A gill may be enough. Have bottles ready by, by to save it, and it will be a good perquisite either to sell or drink with the cook. Never draw your hogshead too, too low, nor tilt it for fear of disturbing your liquor. When it begins to run slow and before the wine grows cloudy, shake the hogshead and carry a glass of it to your master, who will praise you for your discretion and give you all the rest as a perquisite to your place. You may tilt the hogshead the next day, and in a fortnight get a dozen or two of good clear wine to dispose of as you please. In bottling wine, fill your mouth full of corks, together with a large plug of tobacco, which will give the wine the true taste of the weed, so delightful to all good judges in drinking. 
When when you are ordered to decant a suspicious bottle, if a pint be out, give your hand a dexterous shake and show it in a glass that it begins to be muddy. When a hogshead of wine or any other liquor is to be bottled off, wash your bottles immediately before you begin, but be sure not to drain them, by which ma management your master will save some gallons in every hogshead. This is a time that, in honour to your master, you ought to show your kindness to your fellow servants, and especially to the cook, for what signifies a few flagons out of a whole hogshead? But make them be drank in your presence, for fear they should be given to other folk, and so your master be wronged. But advise them, if they get drunk, to go to bed and leave word that they are sick, which last caution I would have all the servants observe, both male and female. <clears throat> If your master finds the hogshead to fall short of his expectation, what is plainer than the vessel leaked, that the wine-cooper had not filled it in proper time, that the merchant had cheated him with hogshead below the common measure? Hmm, cheeky so-and-so. When you are to get on for tea after dinner, which in many families is part of your office, to save firing and to make more haste, Pour it into the tea-kettle from the pot where cabbage or fish have been boiling, which will make it much wholesomer for curing the acid and corroding quality of the tea. Be saving of your candles, and let those in the sconces of the hall, the stairs, and the lanterns burn down into the sockets until they go out of themselves, for, for which your master and lady will commend your thriftiness as soon as they smell the snuff. If a gentleman leaves a snuff-box or a pick-tooth uh, case on the table after dinner, and goeth away, look upon it as part of your veils, for so it is allowed by all servants, and you do no wrong by your master or lady. If you serve a country squire, when gentlemen and ladies come to dine at your house, never fail to make their servants drunk, and especially the coachman, for the honour of your master, to which all your actions you must have a special regard as being the best judge, for the honour of every family is deposited in the hands of the cook, the butler, and the groom, and I shall thereafter demonstrate. Snuff the candles at supper as they stand on the table, which is much the securest way, because if the burning snuff happens to get out of the snuffers, you have a chance that it may fall into a dish of soup, sack posset, rice milk or the like where it will be immediately extinguished but with very little stink when you have snuffed the candle always leave the snuffers open for the snuff will of itself burn away to ashes and cannot fall out and dirty the table when you snuff the candles again that the salt may lie smooth in the salt cellar press it down with your moist palm when a gentleman is going away after dining with your master, be sure to stand in full view, and follow him to the door, as you have an opportunity look full in his face. Perhaps it may bring you a shilling, but if the gentleman hath lain there a night, get the cook, the housemaid, the stableman, the scullion, and the gardener to accompany you, and to stand in his way to the hall in line on each side of him. If the gentleman performs handsomely, it will do him honour and cost your master nothing. You need not wipe your knife to cut bread for the table, because in cutting a slice or two it will wipe itself. Put your finger into every bottle to feel whether it be full, which is the surest way, for feeling hath no fellow. When you go down to the cellar to draw ale or small beer, take care to observe directly the following method. Hold the vessel between the finger and your thumb of your right hand, with the palm upwards, then hold the candle between your fingers, but a little leaning towards the mouth of the vessel. Then take out the spigot with your left hand and clap the point of it in your mouth, and keep your left hand to watch accidents. When the vessel is full, withdraw the spigot from your mouth, well wetted with spittle, which being of a, a slimy cons consistence will make it stick faster in the faucet. If any tallow drops into the vessel, you may e easily, if you think of it, remove it with a spoon, or rather with your finger. Always lock up a cat in the closet, where you keep your china plates, 
for fear the mice may steal in and break them. A good butler always breaks off the point of his bottle screw in two days by trying which is hardest, the point of the screw or the neck of the bottle. In this case, to supply the want of a screw after the stump hath torn the cork in pieces, make use of a silver fork, and when the scraps of the cork are almost drawn out, slurt the mouth of the flirt the mouth of the bottle into the cistern three or four times until you quite clear it. If a gentleman dines often with your master and gives you nothing when he goes away, you may use several methods to show him some marks of your dis displeasure and quicken his memory. If he calls for bread or drink, you may pretend not to hear, or send it to another who called after him. If he asks for wine, let him stay a while, and then send him small beer. Give him always foul glasses. Send him a spoon when he asks for a, for a knife. Wink at the footman to leave him without a plate. By these and little expedients you may probably be a better man by half a crown before he leaves the house, provided you watch in an opportunity of standing by when he is going. If your lady loves play, your f fortune is fixed for ever. Moderate gaming will be a perquisite of ten shillings a week, and in such a family I would rather choose to be butler than a chaplain, or even than be a steward. It is all ready money, and got without labour, unless your lady happens to be one of those who either obligeth you to find wax candles, or forceth you to divide it with some favourite servant. But at worst, the old cards are your own. And if the gamesters play deep or grow peevish, they will change the cards so often that the old ones will be a considerable advantage by selling them to coffee-houses or families who love play, but cannot afford better than cards at second hand. When you attend a service, be sure to leave new packs within reach of the gamesters which those who have ill luck will readily take to change their fortune, and now and then an old pack mingled with the rest will easily pass. Be sure to be very officious on play nights, and ready with your candles to light out your company, and have salvers of wine at hand to give them when they call, but manage so with the cook that there be no supper, because it will be so much saved in your master's family, and because the supper will considerably lessen your gains. Next to cards there is nothing to, so profitable to you as bottles, in which perquisite you have no com competitors except the footmen, who are apt to steal and vend them for pots of beer. But you are bound to prevent any such abuses in your, your master's family. The footmen are not to answer for what they are broken at the general bot bottling, and those may be as many as your discretion will make them. The profit of glasses is so very inconsiderable that it is hardly worth mentioning. It consists only in small presents made by the glassman, and about four shillings in the pound added to the prices for your trouble and skill in choosing them. If your master hath, hath a large stock of glasses, and you or your fellow servants happen to break any of them without your master's knowledge, Keep it a secret till there are not enough left to serve the table. Then tell your master that the glasses are gone. This will be but one vexation to him, which is much better than fretting once or twice a week. And it is the office of a good servant to discompose his master and his lady as seldom as he can. And here the cat and dog will be great use to take the blame from you. Note that bottles missing are supposed to be half stolen by stragglers and other servants, and the other half broken by accident and general washing. Wet the backs of your knives until they are sharp as the edge, which will have this advantage, that when the gentlemen find them blunt on one side, they may try the other, and to show you spare no pains in sharpening the knives, wet them so long till you wear out a good part of the iron, and even the bottom of the silver handle. This, this doth credit to your master, for it shows good housekeeping, and the goldsmith may one day make you a present. 
Your lady, when she finds a small beer or ale dead, will blame you for not remembering to put the peg into the vent hole. This is a great mistake, nothing being plainer than that the peg keeps the air in the vessel which spoils the drink, and therefore ought to be let out. But if she insists upon it, to prevent the trouble of pulling out the vent and putting in it in half a dozen times a day, which is not to be borne by a good servant, leave the spigot half out at night, and you will find, with only the loss of two or three quarts of liquor, the vessel will run freely. When you prepare your candles, wrap them up in a piece of brown paper, and so stick them into the socket. Let the paper come halfway up the candle, which looks handsome, if anybody should come in. Do all in the dark to save your master's candles. So that's the end of that chapter um, on directions for the butler. The next directions are to the cook. Chapter 2 is directions to the cook. And I haven't read that yet, so that's a pleasure to come. So um, see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.